Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce here on Mystery Monday. We are going to be finishing up Tablet 3 of the Emerald Tablet. I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm actually recording this on Tuesday, December 13th for Monday, pre-recording it. I have to pre-record most of my videos because I edit them. So they're rarely, if ever, filmed on the day that they are released. But um, it has been a crazy day so far. My six-year-old dog decided that he was going to revert back to puppy stage this morning so i have been chasing him around we've got of course crazy construction going on next door again so if you hear a bunch of noises that's what that is ended up this morning in the middle of atlanta georgia in my bathroom with my dog so it's been a very crazy day but i know a lot of people are having some crazy times right now but that's okay it just is what it is right we're we're all on this journey together i did just finish the recording with angie tillman over part one of the blue people, which is super fascinating. And I cannot wait to get into part two with Stephanie. I hope you guys are just as excited about this as we are. So today we're going to be starting again uh, in tablet three. And for this, I am just going to be sticking to Rebecca Marina Messenger's uh, translation of the third tablet. I have been going back and forth between Doriel's translation, which I'm using for the other tablets, and this one. When I first felt the need and felt inclined to um I keep forgetting I have a microphone now <laughs> when I felt the need or I felt inclined to do the emerald tablets I didn't know much about them and this was actually the first book I ordered on the emerald tablets before I started really researching into the emerald tablets and I do feel like the emerald tablets is a, a kind of a god wink because I came to my attention yesterday that there is another truther that's out there saying thoth is bad but legit, if you take two minutes to read his tablets, you know, he is not bad. He is actually very good. And he is teaching us how to find enlightenment, how to take care of ourselves, how to be good to each other, how to restore our knowledge back of who we truly are as children of God with that light that's inside of us. Once again, Thoth never called himself a deity. Billy Carson is huge on that. He reminds people of that a lot. Thoth never called himself a deity. He never called himself a deity. He called himself a son of Atlantis, period, end of story. And we know that these Emerald Tablets were written from our time. Um, I will put all the past episodes down in the description box below if this is your first time exploring these Emerald Tablets with us. They are super, super fascinating. So today we're going to start start at Tablet 3, verse 10, which is probably one of the most important um, verses, I believe, in in this the key of wisdom, which is the third tablet. And this is going to have to do with gossip. And we spoke about this on Aquarius Rising Africa. What is gossip? You know, if you're a whistleblower, or if something's happened to you, and you, you've been a victim of a crime, and you're reporting the crime, that's fine. Speak up, say something. But if you're making up stories, or if you're creating smear campaigns, that's gossip. And we're going to see what Thoth has to say about this. Uh, Angie Tillman from her channel, Angie Tillman, who did the Blue People episode with me, um, she did a whole episode on is gossip spellcasting. And I will put that down in the description box below as well for you guys. Um, there's a big truther channel out there that all that channel does is gossip. They pull tarot cards on people and make up stories around people. And we know, we know, if you know anything about spiritual spirituality, it goes on the walls of consent. And so legit, you can't pull tarot cards on someone without their permission, without their consent. If you do pull tarot cards on somebody without their consent, first of all, that's considered a spiritual assault, an RAPE spiritually. There's heavy karma associated with that. Second of all, if you're that arrogant to think you have a right to do that, you're not going to get the truth. Spirit is not going to play that way. Spirit's not going to give you the truth about somebody who you have not gotten consent from. Okay? And we're going to talk about this because this is Tablet 3, verse 10. This is what they're talking about. So the original translation from the Atlantean Thoth says, Repeat thou not extravagant speech, neither listen thou to it. So don't even listen to gossip. For it is utterance of one not in equilibrium. Speak thou not of it, so that he before thee may know wisdom. So don't even entertain it. If somebody is gossiping, it's because they are out of balance. They're not healed. They're not good with themselves. 
Thoughts, commentary, and modern English. Do not repeat gossip. Do not even listen to it. For gossip is spoken by one who is not in balance. Do not repeat the things said, but gently keep silent. The one seeking to stir up unrest by vain words will realize that there is no value in idle gossip. This may cause them to turn their own thoughts inward and become wiser. Shishat, Thoth's wife, says in her channeling, Idle words is a practice most commonly attributed to women, but men gossip too, we know that. Yet both males and females often seek to gain attention or a sense of importance by spreading gossip. As you react with an air of indifference or appear completely disinterested, the one seeking to gossip will fall silent. For your own progression forward, it is always good to ask, are these words uplifting? Are these words kind? How does my heart feel as I speak them? It does not matter if the words are factual. It profits your soul nothing if the words are uttered in spite. We also know that uh, both Thought and Shishat have spoken about chaos energy. So what are chaos energies? They're demonic vibrations. So by engaging in gossip, engaging in this chaos, in, in unfactual smear campaigns, regardless of whether it's on a celebrity, a politician, if there's no factual evidence to back it up, it's gossip. It's hearsay that feeds into chaos entity. It feeds into demons. So if you are watching gossip channels, you are feeding into demons, which a lot of these gossip truther channels are run by cabal members pretending to be truthers. The power is yours. You decide where your energy goes. All right. Tablet three, verse 11. Silence is of great profit. An abundance of speech profiteth nothing. Thoth's commentary in modern English, knowing when to keep silent, is a marker of greater wisdom. A wise man once said nothing. Talking incessantly is, no, is of no value and where is the patience then? She shat contributes her wisdom. Only in silence can the true wisdom of the heart be brought forward. When one is constantly speaking, there is no time for reflection. My mother used to tell us all the time, silence is golden. As one learns to be calm and quiet, inner wisdom has a clear path to surface. Constant input and output with no time left for silence is detrimental to the soul. Tablet 3, verse 12. And this is titled, Pride Cometh Before a Fall. The original translation. Exalt not thine heart above the children of men, lest it be brought lower than dust. Modern commentary. Do not think that you are greater or more exalted than any other man or woman. When you enter into a sense of false pride, you are an easy target for self-humiliation. Know this. You are not greater than or less than any other being. Perhaps you may be in a different place energetically. Always return to the heart and be in a space of mercy and tenderness for all. She shat contributes her wisdom. It can be easy to feel like you are better than your brothers and sisters, especially if you have spent a lot of time in meditation and prayer. Yes, we talked about this on Aquarius Rising Africa. There is such thing called spiritual ego. And I say all the time in Ashtanga, we say the two students that are the easiest to teach are the beginner students and the advanced students, because both the beginner and the advanced student know that they know nothing. Right? So watch your ego. What's your ego? If you think you're if you're awake and you think you're better than your neighbor who is still asleep, check that. You're not. Just because you woke up before them doesn't mean you're better than them. Yeah? So this is simply your ego coming forth. It is times like these when you realize just how far you still have to go in your evolution. You can see how easy it is to get a sense of false pride. For this reason, please have mercy on those you see around you who are struggling to evolve spiritually. Hold the mirror up to your own face first before judging others. 
It is true that life workers tend to get into a space of feeling superior. Perhaps they feel more advanced because they dedicated an hour to each day to meditation while others do not. Each must be responsible for his or her own journey. You cannot truly know what any brother or sister does, knows, or believes within their own heart. And you don't know what somebody's path is. You don't know. And I said this on Aquarius Rising Africa. Like we make fun of those who got the zapper. But in a lot of ways, I feel a lot of gratitude for those that volunteer to get it. Because without them getting it, we wouldn't have the data, the data, data, data that we have now. We wouldn't have the evidence, right? We know what Elon Musk changed his uh, pronouns to on Twitter. I can't say it on YouTube, but it's coming. And if we didn't have that research, if we didn't have their experiences, then mankind, humanity, wouldn't have a case. And so maybe we should change our perspective. Even though we didn't get zapped, we have to have a sense of... um humility towards those who did now of course if someone's trying to push it on you still that's a different story but for most people they just went and got it and go about their lives so that they could so they felt like they could live their lives and that might have been their sole agreement before taking this earth they might have agreed to take that part in this battle if they were awake like we are they wouldn't have gotten zapped so maybe they agreed to wake up later so they could get zapped and have evidence in order to push us in the fourth density positive. Who are we to say? The law of one makes it very clear that we are not to say whether somebody is an old soul or a new soul. We have no, that that's none of our business, what somebody else's journey is. And so that is something really huge and really important. And I think we as truthers, as the good side, need to now take into perspective Everybody has a role to play on this timeline. Every soul here is a high priority case. And just because somebody got zapped doesn't mean that they're not going to eventually wake up. And it does not mean that they're not coming with us. That might have just been their agreement in this battle. All right. Tablet three, verse 13. The original translation. If thou be great among men, be honored for knowledge and greatness. Thoth's commentary in modern English, if you desire to know to be known as a great man or great woman, let people see your greatness. Yes, let people share freely in the knowledge that you have accumulating, accumulated. Lording knowledge over people will never prove that you are a great person. Perhaps people will fear you, yet they will not come to you for counsel. Always go back to your heart and look for guidance as your own purpose. Why are you here? Are you here to be known as someone great? Or to be known as someone who truly reaches others through the wisdom and gentleness of your heart? She Shat contributes her wisdom. It takes a great heart to realize the importance of showing your wisdom along with gentleness. To have a gentle heart does not equate with having a weak heart or being a pushover. Have your boundaries. Gentleness means to handle people, life, animals, and earth, and all that you encounter with a gentle approach. Get this or set this as your intention and all will be well. Those who truly know will see that a person willing to seek the gentle way is far more powerful than one who will go out as a roaring lion. It takes more power to see life through the non-threatening eyes of a gentle heart than to always be poised to force your will upon others. True power is found within yourself. It includes your confidence and your abilities, your own divinity. True power never feels threatened. Let me reiterate that again. True power never feels threatened. Sit with your guidance. Pass it through a filter of your own heart. Be still and no you don't have to prove yourself to anyone just be you your actions who you are your heart will shine through and that let other people see your greatness if you feel like you have to tell people how great you are then you might not be that great
tablet three verse 14 and this is titled this section is titled relying on your own discernment and that's something i really hope i know tamara um and i speak a lot about this tamara especially with the gut instinct your own discernment so don't believe something because some truth or told you it's so don't believe something because i told you it's so use your own discernment by doing your own research and following your own gut instinct okay so tablet 3 verse 14 if thou seekest to know the nature of a friend ask not his companion but pass the time alone with him debate with him testing his heart by his words and his bearing so don't ask oh you know what do you think about this person in my I, let's make up a name like, don't go to your friend and be like, what do you think about John Doe? We'll use John Doe. And you, you don't listen to what your friend has to say. Go and experience John Doe for yourself. What do you think? What do you think? In modern English, Thoth says, spending time with a person whom you wish to know more is the only fruitful way to gain understanding of that person. Speak about several topics together and join conversations and you will easily be able to read his nature. You can tell not only by his or her words, but by the vibrational essence which they exude. So let me focus on that again. You can, can tell not only by his or her words, but also by the vibrational essex, essence which they exude. That feeling you get around someone. That's their vibrational essence. Have you ever been around someone and you didn't like them, but you couldn't figure out why you were just uncomfortable? Or maybe you've been around someone and you love that person and you don't know why you love them so much, but you just like being around them. That's their vibrational essence. So that's important. How do they make you feel? What is beyond the words? She Shat says, when getting to know a person, be sure that you put in the effort to spend time with them. To simply ask a companion about that person could give you a faulty opinion. Why? Because every person has their own filters. You are the one wanting to know more about the person, right? Then only you can assess whether this is someone you desire to have in your inner circle or not. Spend time with them without the judgments of another person clouding your vision. Pay attention to how you feel when you are connecting with this person. Pay attention to your gut and to your heart. The heart will never lie to you remember how we talked about discernment pay attention to any red flags that are coming up and always come from a place of being merciful perhaps this person is in your path so that you can be a trusted advisor to them if it is a love interest remember that you are not looking for a fixer upper but a person in vibrational harmony with you ladies i'm especially talking to you your boyfriend your husband, that dude you like, already has a mother. It's not you. You are not your partner's mother. They already have a mother. You're their partner. You can't fix anyone. They have to fix themselves. It's not your job to fix them. You can't fix them. They have to do it themselves. If you go into a relationship, I know because I've tried to do it. If you go into a relationship and try to fix someone, it's just going to backfire on you. That's their journey. If you're looking for someone to be your partner, they're your partner. They're not your pupil. They're not your teacher. They're not your parent. They're your partner. Equal playing fields. Right. So she shot goes on and said red flags when considering a love interest are meant to be a warning that must be heeded. We can go into the greater detail with another book for now pay attention and protect yourself from getting into an energy draining romantic relationship. I've been in those definitely have been in those and it's a lot different when you're not in an energy draining relationship your relationship should add to your life. Your partner should not be a thorn in your side. Your partner should not be draining your energy. Your partner should be supporting your energy as you support his. Your partner should be your biggest cheerleader. And you should be your partner's biggest cheerleader. Tablet 3 of verse 15. The difference between hoarding and sharing from the heart. The original translation says, that which goeth into the storehouse must come forth, 
And the things that are thine must be shared with a friend. Don't, ho I'm not a hoarder. <laughs> I'm literally not a hoarder. Um, I, I actually, sometimes I think that I'm pretty easy to date because I'm very laid back about it. I have high anxiety, yes, but I'm, there's a lot of things that I'm very laid back about. Like, I'm just not fancy. Like, I don't, you don't need to wine and dine me. Like, I'm not, you don't need to buy me expensive shit. Like, I'm not, I'd rather, the best gift a partner can give me is like one that we give each other. Like, if we go traveling together and we, split the price like that's the best gift ever um you know but i'm definitely not a hoarder and like i i've never been that way i'm not someone that needs like i don't need a full walk-in closet with i just don't i just that that overwhelms me to have that much stuff and um <laughs> yeah i mean i i live a very minimalist life and most of that is big too because i go back before you know the world changed i was going back and forth to india so i, I couldn't i literally cannot even though i've never really desire to own a house like I, I literally can't at that point or couldn't at that point because I've spent half my year in India like how am I supposed to take care of a lawn and all that house stuff if I'm literally across the world you know and so I like living places where I can just get up and go if I need to the most of anything that I have is books and yoga pants that's it everything else very minimal and so I understand what they're saying here but let's let's leave let's read the modern commentary what you put away for a rainy day will wither and mold if not used when the need arises. It is far better to share what you have with those in need than to hoard it all for yourself. Well, look at what the controllers have done, right? They've hoarded it all for themselves. Hoarding is an emotional state that extends far beyond money or wealth. We know that. We know that people who have the tendency to hoard, it's, an, it's, an, it's a mental issue, right? If you allow the energy of hoarding to overtake your life, you will find yourself in an unhappy state. You may begin to hoard time, relationships, even energy. Be weary of this sneaky darkness. If you see your brother in need, take that which you have put aside and share it with him. Always follow your guidance on this. There are some who are in need as part of their life lesson and must come to their own understanding. If every person gave when and where guided, there would be no poverty in the world. The universe is always listening to the voices of those in need. Yes, it, yes, it is. Absolutely, it is. There is a divine plan of, of giving and receiving for all life. Sharing from guilt does not bring joy. Sharing when guided brings about great joy. A state of joy causes you to attract even more abundance. Shishat contributes her wisdom. My beloved Thoth has spoken well. I would add a few more things to consider. We are all sources of food for something. Let me read that again. We are all sources of food for something. We all both give and receive life and nourishment. Consider this. A plant receives rain and nourishment from the earth. We receive the plant as we eat it. Perhaps the plant is food for animals. Humans are a source of food for thousands of parasites, bacteria, and viruses in every moment. Let us take this into the realm of spirit. When humans exude negative energy, like gossip, that we just spoke about, they become food for chaos energies to feast upon, loosh. This can be a trap as the chaos, chaos energies stir up more strife in order to keep their food source growing. Beings of light are very attracted to humans when they are in a state of happiness and bliss. They warm themselves by the fire of your good energy. Happiness begets more happiness. It is good to share happiness with a friend. When you are in a happy State, reach out to a friend who could use some uplifting words or energy. The storehouse need not be thought of as only a place for money. The storehouse of your energy is far more valuable. For with the right energy and the right state of mind, much wealth of all things accumulates naturally. Tablet 3, verse 16. And this is, this is titled, Pity the Fool Who Resist Knowledge. Knowledge is regarded by the fool as ignorance, and the things that are profitable are to him hurtful. He liveth in death. It is therefore his food. Thoughts, Commentary, in Modern English. 
A fool thinks he or she knows the truth, even when their own life is in disarray. It is as if he or she is so blind to their own ego that they refuse to accept any other point of view. Well, we know people on the normie side of that, of this battle who are like that, but we also know many truthers who are like that too. The fool suspects that things could help, that things that could help are harmful. He or she does not listen and rarely seeks counsel of the heart. He, she lives a lie. That lie is their substance and it eats them alive. She shat contributes her wisdom. I plead for you to enter a state of mercy when approaching someone who has a foolish type of personality. Very often when one is so turned away from knowledge, it, it's a sense of insecurity. We see that with people who cling to the church. No matter how much information you can show someone how about how disgusting the church is, they cling to it. It's because they're insecure. And somebody had pointed that out to me years ago before this great awakening, that those who are so dogmatic in their relationship, it's, or in their religion rather, they fear that they are wrong. And so they force, they get forceful with their opinions, forceful. They won't look at anything that counters them. We don't want to live in an echo chamber. We don't. Echo chambers are never helpful for anyone. All right. They become so ensconed in defending their point of view that they bring harm to themselves all through ignorance. Many who have stubborn resistance to truth were influenced by false teachings in childhood. Let's read that again. Many who have a stubborn resistance to truth were influenced by false teachings in their childhood. I'm actually going to like mark that because that's good. I might make that the title of this video because that's really good. Thank you, she shat. That's really good. Those holding this personality type hopped and hang their beliefs on doctorate. Yep. I just talked about the church, didn't I? I see you, spirit. I see what's going on. Those holding this personality type often hang their beliefs on doctrine and believe fiercely that they have been taught well. When conversing with one who bristles up as you present a different point of view, be weary. It is not your job to convince anyone of anything that they do not wish to see. Again, let us go back to the teaching about having a gentle heart. Plant a seed in if your discernment tells you to do so, yet engage not in arguing. Doing that will only drain your priceless energy life force. That's why I just block. When, when fundies come on my channel and abuse, I just usually just block them. Just block them. There are plenty of people who desire to know more truth. Your prayer in this divine, please guide me. Please guide me only to those that I'm meant to help. Your prayer, let me read that again. Your prayer in this divine, please guide me only to those that to those that I am meant to help. I like that. It's like they call God divine in this with a capital D, D I V I N E, divine. They're, that's what they call God, divine. Divine, please guide me only to those that I am meant to help. Remember this. You are like a key that opens a lock, but only to those who are ready for your guidance. So again, you are like a key that opens a lock, but only for those who are ready for your guidance. Tablet three, verse 17. The wise man let his heart overflow, but keeps his mouth silent. Thoughts, commentary in modern English. When your heart is overflowing with love, no speaking is needed. Your heart always speaks louder than words. She shat contributes her wisdom. This is truly a short admonition, yet the wise would do well to heed this truth. You can do much good by sitting in silence while sending out the vibration of pure love from your heart. Try this the next time you desire to let someone know that they are loved. Sit and think of them holding them in your heart imagine actual waves of love going out to them this is especially useful if you've had a disagreement with someone and desire to make peace i do this all the time actually there are people i i do this for i try to send them send them love sometimes you may not feel love for a person and yet you still desire peace in that case be still and send thoughts of peace and ask permission of divine love to surround them Tablet 3, verse 18, be free from the bonds of darkness. O men, 
List to the voice of wisdom. List to the voice of light. Mysteries there are in the cosmos that unveiled fill the world with their light. Let he who would be free from the bounds of darkness first divine the material from the immaterial, the fire from the earth. For know ye that as earth descends to earth, so also fire ascends unto fire and becomes one with fire. He who knows the fire that is within himself shall ascend unto the eternal fire and dwell in it eternally. Thoughts Commentary in Modern English The voice of wisdom is the voice of light. Let me read that again. The voice of wisdom is the voice of light. It is in paying attention to your inner guidance that the great mysteries of the cosmos are revealed. It's like the story of Krishna Govinda. So he's a Hindu avatar. When he was, when Krishna, who's the avatar of the Bhagavad Gita, when he was a baby, his name was Govinda. And he eats a bunch of dirt as babies do. And his mother comes and she pulls the dirt out of his mouth and she looks into his mouth and she sees the whole universe inside. You carry the whole universe universe inside you all the secrets of the mysteries of the world is in your dna it's in your spirit so start trusting that let me read that again the voice of wisdom is the voice of light it is paying attention to your inner guidance that the great mysteries of the cosmos are revealed if you desire to be free from the bonds of darkness release all fears of being overtaken by that darkness. Let me read that again. If you desire to be free from the bonds of darkness, release all fears of being overtaken by that darkness. First, realize that there is no difference between the material world and the spiritual world. Yes, because the material world was created by the spiritual world. You are the Shakti. Your soul created your experience. The fire within your soul is related to the fire within the earth. Your body will return to the earth dust one day, but the fire in your soul will live on. When you know that the fire within your soul is eternal, then you do not fear death. Your soul is eternally one with the fire. She shat contributes her wisdom. While the material world is needed for man's existence on the earth plane, it is his inner fire that lives on forever. There must be a balance of the material world and the immaterial world to bring about the unveiling of even more mysteries. Man has long, long sought after the unknown. It is an unquenchable fire that keeps us ever evolving. Shishat uses the word us because every deity figure is also seeking evolution. There is no stagnation in the human field or the spiritual field. Tablet 3, verse 19, the most potent fire of all. Fire, the inner fire, is the most potent of all force, for it overcometh all things and penetrates to all things of the earth. Man supports himself only on that which resists, so earth must resist man, else he existeth not. Thoughts, commentary, and modern English. The fire of the soul is indeed the most potent force in all the universe, for it is capable of overcoming all obstacles. You're resilient. The fire of the soul is indeed the most potent force in all the universe, for it is capable of overcoming all obstacles. Not some, all obstacles. There is no part of earth that, that this human fire cannot penetrate. There must be resistance or opposite to what is desired to bring about appreciation. Light would not be appreciated if it were not for the dark. So that's the friction, the resistance, the friction. Good would not be good or even recognized if, as good if there was no evil. All forces contribute towards man's evolution. That's the polarization. She shat contributes her wisdom. The inner fire is akin to the magnetism that is generated by the heart. Humanity's consciousness is a bridge between the seen and the unseen. I like that. Humanity's consciousness is a bridge between the seen 
and the unseen. I'm going to mark this because that's really good. That's true. It's the consciousness that's the 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 seen, the material world, the property, the parusha, the unseen, the parusha, Ishvara, Shakti, Shiva, Shiva, Shakti. It is a joining of these two elements that make it possible to transform all things. Resistance or friction is but a stepping stone to a higher evolution. Yes, that's what we've been saying for a while on this channel now. You need the friction, boo. You need that friction. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable in that friction because that is what changes things. That is what, as they're saying here, is a stepping stone to higher evolution. When one obstacle is dissolved, another takes its place. Overcoming and transforming is the path of greatest evolution. This earth plane is destined to always be on the cutting edge of evolutionary growth. Other species gather around to watch as humanity struggles to move forward. That gives me chill bumps. It makes me want to cry because we've seen that said in all of these other channelings these other books the law of one talks about this the cassiopeians talk about this all these people that have contacts with the galactus say the exact same thing that they gather around to watch they gather around to cheer us on as we move forward you have a great cheerleading section of benevolent beings You have a great cheerleading section of benevolent beings, but they also give you a warning. Be aware that there are also nefarious beings who wish to harm you, and we do know that. Remember that light always prevails. Therefore, my beloved thought has always admonished humanity to seek the light. Seek the light, because it always prevails. Always. I mean, even in the Law of One, they talk about how the um, negative beings can only go certain the the light the, the the service to others the path of the light can keep going up the rings but at the negative level there's only there's only a place where they can't go any further because it just self implodes and they have to come back to the beginning again and start over to eventually merge into the light because yeah the light always prevails always different strokes for different folks tablet three verse 20 all eyes do not see the same vision. For to one object appears of one form and color and appears different to the eye of another. So also the infinite fire changes from color to color and is never the same from day to day. Thoth's commentary in modern English. 100 people can witness the same event, yet there will be a different perspective by each person. Exactly. This is because each person has their own filter system based on past and current circumstances in their life, their karma. The fire in is the soul, in the soul is constantly changing as well. It moves in rapport with communication of the heart's desire within. An earthly flame flickers, waning and then growing again. So too, this inner fire illuminates with many different colors according to the soul's purpose. No two soul flames are ever alike at the same time and should not be compared to one another. Shishat contributes her wisdom. Every individual is on their own path. Each person has their own purpose, according to agreements made before incarnation. We just talked about that, the zappers, right? Every individual is on their own path. Each person has their own purpose, according to agreements made before incarnation. Some people spend lifetime after lifetime pursuing the same goal. We respect the soul fire of each of you and the purpose for which you came. It is not profitable to compare your soul's journey to that of yet another. We all see a different vision. Let, let's all honor the vision of others. Please cease to compare yourself with others. Your path is the only path that is best for you. Your journey is the only one that you are responsible for. Tablet 3 verse 21. Man's fire can never be quenched. Thus speak I thought of my wisdom, for man is a fire burning bright through the night. Never is quenched in the veil of darkness, never is quenched by the veil of night. Thoughts Commentary in Modern English As I have observed through many lifetimes, man is indeed like a blazing fire that burns brightly, no matter how strong the darkness is. The fire of the soul can never be quenched, for that fire is eternal. Shishat contributes her wisdom. 
Thoth seeks to let humanity know that the fire of the soul can never be extinguished. No matter what the veil disguises the dark evil, the light will always prevail. The earth will not see destruction. As long as men hold to the light and believes that no darkness is, is more powerful than the light of a soul. Hence why those death spells that were put on me, five of them that I'm aware of, never worked. I also know about the contract of destruction placed on me, which hasn't worked. You're not going to win because the light will never be extinguished by the dark. Never. Must be frustrating because here I am. I'm still here. And I'm doing great. Tablet 3, verse 22. Freedom from the bondage of strife. Into men's heart I looked by my wisdom, found them not free from the bondage of strife. Free from my toils, thy, thy fire, O oh my brother, least it be buried in the shadow of night. Thoth's Commentary in Modern English. I have looked into the hearts of men and sadly have seen that they still hold on to the mindset of bondage and enslavement. It is a recognition of power of the burning within that will cause a permanent change in this belief. Your limits that you see in, your, in yourself are only your own perceptions. They're not real. Whether that be sickness or whatever, it's only your mind's creation. So if your mind created it, you can uncreate it, right? The fire within represents the power of divinity that hum humanity possesses. Acknowledging this power will bring one into a place of releasing the old change of enslavement. Man is not only meant to toil so savagely, there is a better way. It all begins with realizing your value as a divine be being filled with holy fire. If a man never seeks to use this forgotten power, he will surely be buried in the dark energy of ceaseless toil. Shishak contributes her wisdom. My beloved Thoth has always sought to be a teacher and servant of mankind. Despite Thoth sharing so much wisdom, there is still a pattern of enslavement and bondage to authority figures among much of humanity. It's giving me chill bumps. Still, humans do not recognize that they are royalty, a product of the stars. Now at this time, mankind is waking up as never before. Pay attention to the fire within your heart and follow where it leads. Recognize your own divinity is the best antidote to enslavement. And I know I said that I was going to finish off the third tablet today, but I actually think that's a really good stopping point because we still have a lot to go through in the third tablet. And I don't want to rush through this because every single verse in this tablet is so freaking powerful. So don't forget to join us also on Mondays at 9 a.m. Eastern time over on Aquarius Rising Africa, where we will continue to also break this down and have commentary with both Mornay and Shanti. It's always great to have more than one person going through this. And it's also, as we said, I think in the very beginning, these tablets become more and more and more alive the more and more and more you read them. And so I hope that each of you guys are getting your own copies and you're reading along with us on both channels and revisiting all of these scriptures every day because these are so powerful. We read some through some pretty powerful things today. So next week we'll start with verse 23 um, and our dive into the Emerald Tablets, depending on how far we get with Aquarius Rising Africa. Of course, I want us to keep around the same pace with both channels just so we're not too far ahead of each other. But the next section will start with verse 23 of the third tablet. But to end this episode, I will once again leave you with the full reading of the third tablet with no commentary. I thought the Atlantean, give of my wisdom, give of my knowledge, give of my power. Freely I give to the children of men. Give that they too might have wisdom to shine through the world from the veil of the night. Wisdom is power and power is wisdom one with each other, perfecting the whole. Be thou not proud, O man, in thy wisdom. Discourse with the ignorant as well as the wise. If one comes to thee full of knowledge, listen and heed, for wisdom is all. Keep thou not silent when evil is spoken, for truth like the sunlight shines above all. He who oversteppeth the law shall be punished, for only through law comes the freedom of men. Cause thou not fear, for fear is bondage, a fetter that binds the darkness to men. 
follow thine heart during thy lifetime. Do thou more that is commanded of thee. When thou hast gained riches, follow thou thine heart. For all these are of no avail if thine heart be weary. Diminish thou not the time of following thine heart. It is a hoard of the soul. They that are guided go not astray, but they that are loose cannot find a straight path. If thou go among men, make thyself love the beginning and end of the heart. If one cometh unto thee for counsel, let him speak freely, and that thing for which he hath come to thee may be done. If he hesitates to open his heart to thee, it is because thou, the judge, doest the wrong. Repeat thou not exaggerate speech, neither listen thou to it, for it is the utterance of one not in equilibrium. Speak thou not of it, so that he before thee may know thy wisdom. Silence is of great profit, and abundance of speech proteth nothing. Exalt not thine heart above the children of men, lest it be brought lower than the dust. If thou be great among men, be honored for knowledge and gentleness. If thou seeketh to know the nature of a friend, ask not his companion, but pass a time alone with him, debate with him, testing his heart by his words and his bearing. That which goeth into the storehouse must come forth, and the things that are thine must be shared with a friend. Knowledge is regarded by the fool as ignorance, and things that are profitable are to him hurtful. He liveth in death, it is therefore his food. The wise man lets his heart overflow, but keeps silent his mouth. O men, list to that voice of wisdom, list to the voice of light, Mysteries they are in the cosmos that unveiled fill the world with their light. Let he who be free from bounds of darkness first divine the material from the immaterial, the fire from the earth. For know ye that as earth descends to earth and also fire ascends unto fire and becomes one with the fire, he who knows the fire that is within himself shall ascend unto the eternal fire and dwell in it eternally. Fire, the inner fire, is the most potent of all forces, for it overcometh all things and penetrates to all things of the earth. Man supports himself only on that which resists. So earth must resist man, else he existeth not. All eyes do not see the same vision, for to one object appears of one form and color, and to a different eye of another. So also the infinite fire, changing from color to color, it never the same from day to day. Thus speak I thought from my wisdom, for man is a fire burning bright through the night, never is quenched in the veil of the darkness, never is quenched by the veil of the night. Into men's heart I looked for my wisdom, found them not free from the bondage of strife. Free from the toils thy fire, O brother, least to be buried in the shadow of night. Hark ye, O man, and list to this wisdom. Where do name and form cease? Only in consciousness, invisible, an infinite force of radiant bright. The forms that ye create by brightening thy vision are truly effects that follow thy cause. Man is a star bound to a body until in the end he is freed through his strife. Only by struggling and toiling thy utmost shall the star within thee bloom out in new life. He who knows the commencement of all things, free in his star from the realms of night. Remember, O oh man, that all which exists is only another form of that which exists not. Everything that has being is passing into ye yet another being, and thou thyself are not an exception. Consider the law, for all is law. Seek not that which is not of the law, for such exist only in the illusion of senses. Wisdom cometh to all her children, even as they cometh unto wisdom. 
all through the ages the light has been hidden. Awake, O oh man, and be wise. Deep in the mysteries of life I have traveled, seeking and searching for that which is hidden. List ye, O oh man, and be wise. Far neath the earth's crust in the halls of Amente, mysteries I saw that are hidden from men. Oft have I journeyed the deep hidden passage, looked on the light that is life among men. There near the flower of life ever living, searched I the heart and the secrets of men, found I that man is but living in darkness, light of the great fire is hidden within. Before the lords of hidden Amente learned I the wisdom I give unto men. Masters are they of the great secret wisdom brought from the future of infinity's end. Seven are they the lords of Amente, overlords they of the children of mourning, sons of the cycles, masters of wisdom. Formed are not they as the children of men? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are the titles of the masters of men. Far from the future, formless yet forming, came they as teachers of the children of men. Lived they forever, yet not of the living, bound not to life and yet free from death. Ruled they forever with infinite wisdom, bound yet not bound to the dark halls of death. Life they have lived, yet life that is not lived. Free from all are the lords of all. Forth from them came forth the Logos, instruments they of the power o'er all, vast in their continents, yet hidden in smallness, formed by a forming known yet unknown. Three holds the key of all hidden magic, creator he of the halls of the dead, sending forth power shrouded with darkness, binding the souls of the children of men, sending the darkness, binding the soul force, director of negative to the children of men. Four is he who loses the power, Lord he of life, to the children of men. Light is his body, flame his continents, freer of souls to the children of men. Five is the master lord of all magic, key to the word that resounds among men. Six is the lord of light, the hidden pathway, path of the souls of the children of men. Seven is he who is lord of the vastness, master of space, and the key of the times. Eight is he who orders the progress, weighs and balances the journey of men. Nine is the father, vast he of continents, forming and changing from out of the formless. Meditate on the symbols I give thee. Keys are they, though hidden from men. Reach ever upward, O soul of the morning. Turn thy thoughts upward to the light and to life. Find in the keys of the numbers I bring thee, light on the pathway from life unto life. Seek ye with wisdom, turn thy thoughts inward, close not thy mind to the flower of light. Place in thy body a thought form picture, think of the numbers that lead thee to life. Clear is the pathway to he who has wisdom, open the door to the kingdom of light. Pour forth thy flame as a son of the morning, shut out the darkness and live in the day. Take thee, O man, as part of thy being, the seven who are but are not as they seem. Open, O man, have I my wisdom, follow the path and the way I have led. Master of wisdom, son of the morning, light and life to the children of men.